Hey, what's up? Welcome to a new tutorial with PSD Box. I'm Andre, and today we're gonna edit an architectural render in Photoshop. It's a basic tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to create an ambient, um, how to change the look, let's say, of a architectural rendering like this. I'm gonna show the original image that I got, which was this. So we went from this to this. I'm not gonna add too many details, just to populate, let's say, a bit this image and show you how to change the, um, the mood uh, of this image. I already have a tutorial about this with a lot more detail, but this is something basic which you can apply to your projects. And in the future, I'm gonna create a, another one that's a bit more complex and uh, more difficult, let's say, more advanced. Uh, you'll have everything that you need for this on the website on psdbox.com. You'll find the links on the video description. And you can use any Photoshop version for this. Photoshop CC is recommended, but you can use any Photoshop version to, to make this. So I hope you enjoy it and let's get started. So we're going to start with the house, with this uh, render. I have this one as well. Uh, I'm going to give you the link to this if you want to try uh, with this one. It's maybe a bit more complex because there's no floor for this. So you have to have a bit more of imagination of on how you, you're going to place this on, on a background. But uh, let's work with this one. So I'm going to open it. We're going to first uh, I want to change the sky. If you have a real render from a client, maybe, um, you would have the alpha channels as well. So um, changing the sky would be as, simply, as simple as um, deactivating a layer. But in this case, we don't have this. Uh, this is a JPEG, so we're going to have to do it manually. Uh, in part, this is good because we will practice uh, selections. And we're going to work with channels for this. Mm, we're going to do this in two steps. First, um, take a look at the image and you can see that the top part is really easy to select because it's just straight lines. The difficult part comes here. Um, what you can do is get rid of everything if you want and add your own uh, vegetation or whatever. But in this case, I'm going to leave it there and uh, select it using channels. It's not really, really difficult, so don't worry too much. Don't don't get scared about this. We're gonna start with the easy part. I'm gonna use the magic wand tool and let's say with a tolerance of 13. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad. And even higher, about 20. And what I wanna do is select the straight lines. I don't care about the clouds or anything there. I just wanna have the selection around this um, straight edges. On some areas, you'll have to reduce the tolerance or just use the pen tool, maybe. It's really up to you. I'm going to do this here and try select this part of the inside of the windows. I'm going to do it a bit quick, uh, so um, I don't want to spend too much time here. So I have the selection around this. I'm going to create a layer mask. Of course, I have to invert it. And I'm going to get rid of this clouds as well. Actually, a nice way of seeing this is first, you can create a dark layer with a solid color, or also you can double click and choose stroke and use a color like, for example, red. Increase the size, and that way you can see where the parts that you want to remove are. So, in order to remove the parts from here, I'm going to disable the layer mask for a second, is uh, working with channels. I'm going to channels. So what I have to do here is make sure that you select, select the channel that gives you most contrast between the part that you want to keep and the part that you want to mask. In this case, the sky and the leaves here. So uh, in this case, it's blue. You can see that the, it gives you maximum contrast plus those um, clouds go away. So I'm going to select blue and I'm going to channel uh, image calculations and by default it selects the same channel that you select in this case blue and on source 2 it selects blue as well and choose multiply as the blend mode and that's 
okay because this increases the contrast even more and now I'm gonna press Control L and I'm gonna increase this even more make this a bit brighter like that and click OK now um, you will see that this inner part here uh, it's gray we're gonna deal with that a bit later let's first focus on this part and also here so now that I have this layer mask I'm gonna control click it this will select uh, everything there select RGB go to layers I'm gonna reactivate my layer mask that I had originally uh, to remove those areas there and I'm gonna create a new layer underneath and use red color because I want to see behind this when I remove uh, the parts if you don't see the marching ends press control command H on your keyboard and they go away the selection is still active and with the brush tool I'm gonna to paint like that and get rid of the sky over there here when I get close to the straight line I'm gonna click shift and click again and this will create a straight line and Probably the easiest way would be to just get rid of these bushes and, as I said, um, create your own um, background for this if you want. Now, as, as I said, that we're going to deal with that a bit later. Well, after we're done with this. And I'm going to get rid of this from here as well. Obviously, I would... Um, I would um, refine the edge. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now on the inside here, if I do the same here, you can see it also deletes the plants because um, here, as you can see, they're not black. They're not completely black, they are gray. So once we're done with that side, I'm gonna control L on this alpha one again, and I'm gonna darken this part even more like that. Click OK. Now control click this alpha channel. Go back here, select my layer mask and add it. Well, remove this from here. Like so. And let's do the same here. With a real render, as I said, you would have the alpha channel, so all of this would be unnecessary. I'm gonna open my stock folder and get the new sky. Actually if you mask using, oops I don't have it here, I have to get it from the other document. It's recommended that you actually have the sky here before you mask so that way you can see how your how your masks look like. Uh, here for example you can see well it doesn't, it's not necessary to refine the edges here it looks pretty nice but if you have to mask it you can right click and choose select and mask and you can use the decontaminate colors and that way photoshop will try to well actually it will not try it will actually do it uh, it, you know, it does a really good job on the edges take a look here if you can see it it blends the edges with the new background, but that means it will create a new layer with a new layer mask just as a backup. So you have a backup of the original. Okay, let's move on and start adding stuff here. I used Pixel Squid. When I work with 3D renders and I want to add objects, uh, well, even on manipulations, when I want to add objects that I can spin around, I use Pixel Squid. Um, it's really good. It's a paid stock site of 3D renders and it looks like this. I have a plugin um, where That links to the website. So it's just like a stock site when you add um, images to your light box um, I Can see that here. So I have several light boxes with several kinds of objects uh, in this case I have this one architectural and I added the car and in this you have all the objects that I used on the stock folder but uh, I just want to show you how this works so I want to add this car I can put it there spin it around like that and it will download again and update this smart object and put it wherever I want 
The good thing about this is that it's not only allowing you, uh, not gonna allow you only to do this, but you can also embed as, as a smart object. And this has a whole lot mm, more adjustable settings. So I'm gonna add this just to show you. In case you have a um, an important project or a client that is very um, specific about what he wants, or if you wanna um, integrate this a lot more realistically inside this um, background, what you can do is, well, let's wait for, for this to download. Uh, it's gonna embed the layers and you're gonna see this in just a second. You can edit every single detail of this, of this car. Um, let's wait for, for it to download. Now, um, you can see it is as a, it's downloaded as a smart object and nothing seem, seems to change except that it's higher quality um, when you download the, when you embed the layers. But now if I double click here, you will see that I have a lot more layers here. And inside the advanced tab, you will find, for example, a depth map. So you can add realistic uh, blurring to this, realistic lens blur because you can see how it looks like. See that? You will also have selection areas, so you can see exactly how the image was created. So you can select each part of it using, for example, the magic wand. If you double click, actually, you will get here. And you can select individual parts of the, of the image. Uh, you also have um, Lighting uh, layers. Well, let's see, subject over here. Check this out. You have the shine, so you can edit this or use it as a mask. You have, you can see actually the curves here. Let's disable the first one. Um, you can enable or disable this. Or you can have it uh, on a different color. Uh, you have the reflections, um, the lighting of it. Uh, let's disable this so you can see it better. And the base, so you have a lot more control here, and you can also change the shadows or disable them, which is really, which is really nice. So you have um, a lot more control. I'm gonna leave the car here, make it just slightly smaller. Um, the one that you have on your document on the stock folder is on a different angle, but here I think it looks better. I'm gonna place it there, and it looks to too bright on the side. I will have to use one of the layers inside there, but I'm gonna go quicker a bit and not go inside of that. I'm gonna simply create a new layer and I wanna create this shadow here because take a look. It's on a shadow area. So I would create a shadow like this and fill that with black and Blur it a bit, Gaussian blur, about four pixels, five. And I'm gonna drop the opacity, let's say 30%. And that's it. Probably creating a straight line will be more realistic. Okay, just to uh, make it look like it, uh, this car is under that, well, uh, in that shadow area. Um, Let's continue and let's um, add more stuff. Here I added a small, small wooden fence. This is one of them. I'm gonna paste that over there. To make it bigger. And put it over there. This is also from Pixel Squid. All the objects that I added here are downloaded from Pixel Squid. And one other thing that I added is a man standing there. I'm gonna give you the website where I got this. Um, it's actually really a really cool website because you have a lot of people out of their backgrounds. So you don't have to do anything. Uh, just place them on your image and um, use layer styles or adjustments to make them fit your document. I'm gonna place him right there. I have some layer styles. See that? And filters. I desaturated a bit. And with the color overlay I made him I made him a bit 
darker sedan the color overlay on soft light with this dark color i made him more desaturated and more and more uh, a bit darker now i also want to create a shadow so i'm gonna double click and create a drop shadow a bit more distance and i want to mask the shadow on the ground and also here so i'm going to right click on effects and choose create layers and this will add my drop shadow state here on its own layer and now i can use the selection of the car because i only want the selection to be over the surface of the car i can go here and control click the car this will make the selection of it and go to my drop shadow and create a layer mask with that selection active basically what i did is this i used the selection of the car as a mask for my shadow and now it's only visible or mostly visible i'm gonna delete this part over here over the surface of my vehicle there and i also can delete this part over here because I only want this shadow to be on his right side over there. See that? Okay, now what else? Let's. I should have created the shadow there on the ground on his feet, but um, I'm not gonna spend time doing that. So um, I also added on the original, I'm gonna show you what I have. I also have this bicycle here, this um, toy there, but uh, I'm going to move on and show you how I made the, the mood of this, the color tones and all of that because as I said, this is a simple uh, basic tutorial. So I started with a color lookup. Uh, you need Photoshop CS6 at least because uh, in Photoshop CS5, the color lookup um, did not exist. So they introduced it uh, with Photoshop CS6 and I used the fall colors first and I set it on normal at 50%. This will give me this warm tone. I wanted to create this uh, sort of um, sunset effect then a gradient map and I use the photographic toning go here on this uh, small icon and choose photographic toning and I used uh, sepia selenium 3 let's find it sepia selenium 3 and again I left it on normal and I changed this to 40% and check that out see that uh, the car probably is too bright here, but uh, we're not going to go not, not going to go into that much detail. You can use a color overlay to darken it a bit. And what else? Another color lookup. This time, uh, I used one of my mm, own presets. I created a list. Uh, take a look at this list here. I created myself, and I used the Urbanita, and this is what it does. Um, you can download this pack of um, 3D look, well, 3D lookup tables. You can download them for free. I'm going to give you the link on the video description, and I'm going to create a tutorial also showing you how you can create your own um, your own lookup uh, presets. I'm going to drop the opacity of this to 75 percent. And next, I'm going to add a curves adjustment. Um, actually, all of this should be on top of everything. Right there. Okay, uh, curves layer. And here I use this just to create a split tone effect. I'm going into the blue channel, drag this a little higher up, and drag this down. This will create a split tone effect. Don't drag it too much, it will go to yellow and it's not necessary, it's not desirable. At least in my opinion, I don't like it that much yellow. And then on the red, I'm gonna add some red on the shadows. Like that. And check it out. See how it looks like? Just a tone of blue on the on the shadows. And next I used a, a technique that I usually don't use. Um, is I'm gonna combine all the layers onto a new one by pressing shift alt command E and what this does is it's gonna create well get all the layers and merge them onto a new layer and now I'm gonna blur it I'm gonna go to filter blur and choose the Gaussian blur 
I'm gonna add a high radius. It also depends on your on your canvas size, but 70 for this one, it works. Get a look like this, more or less. Um, and now I'm going to change the bottom of this to lighten. This is an effect that many people use as a fantasy or dreamy effect. Uh, and in this case, it does the job, but obviously it's too strong. I will have to limit the effect only to the bright, uh, to the bright areas, to the highlights. And the way to do that is double clicking on the layer and this will open the layer styles. And now you, you can tell Photoshop that you only want this effect to be visible over the highlights. And you can use the blend if for that. So I'm gonna check if, un if the underlying layer is black, see all of these layers here, uh, I don't want this effect to be visible. So if you drag this to the right, you'll start to see how this the effect starts to disappear, but it's too strong, too, too sudden, too suddenly it disappears. So I'm gonna press and hold the Alt key and split this, and this will have will give you more transition. Okay, and the same on the actual layer where it says this layer, we're gonna do the same. Split this like that, and okay. And now I have to drop the opacity. I'm gonna put it to, let's say, 40%. Take a look before and after. It creates a sort of a dreamy effect that it, it's nice. Maybe even, oops, even higher opacity, let's say 60. It really depends on what you want. Well, actually, let's leave it on 40 because we're gonna add, we're gonna add some lights on screen blend mode um, at the end. Um, let's move on and now I'm gonna shift alt command and E. Uh, this will create another stamp with all the layers merged and I'm gonna use the camera raw filter. I like to use this filter a lot. Um, I'll increase a bit the clarity, drop the contrast a bit and here is really up to you, to your own taste or your client if you're working for somebody. And I'm gonna drop the highlights just a bit and I'm gonna add some Post crop vignetting, protect the highlights and more feather. And the yellows, well, actually the car, especially it's a bit too yellow. I could um, change the highlights to something more the opposite of yellow, which is this blue, maybe. And on the HSL, you can change the luminosities and saturations and hues. For example, the luminance, I could make it brighter, darker, it's really up to you as I said. I'm gonna leave it like that, I just wanted to add some vignetting and you can see the before and after. And we're pretty much done, I'm gonna create a new layer, I'm gonna put it on screen and with a big, big brush on hardness zero, a really big brush like that, I'm gonna create some lights there uh, with a really dark orange tone like this. Let's see, maybe it's too strong, yep. Have to use something really dark, like so. One there and one even darker over here, but with a smaller brush, like that. This will create a sort of a misty effect. Okay, and I'm gonna leave it like this. Um, for a basic uh, tutorial, for a basic editing, I think it doesn't look that bad. I'm gonna create a snapshot and show you the original so we, we can see what it looks like. So we went from this to this. Just by adding a few details, I think it looks much better. As I said, on the future, I'm gonna create something a bit more advanced. I wanna, I have to find good images. Um, if any of you wanna send me your real render, uh, you, can, you can contact me uh, through my website and send me your render and I'll, I will I will use it as a, well, for a tutorial if you want to. Uh, if not, I'm gonna have to find an image myself and I'm gonna use that. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, it was really basic. So we'll see you on the next tutorial.